now that we have our table and our figure in our first R markdown report, right? We learn how to actually show content, show analysis there and, and include those outputs. We actually want to add some text, right? The strength of R markdown really is that it can integrate text with code. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to add text and, and how to format text. Now, before I do that, I want to briefly mention that there are different ways of, of, of using R Markdown for your projects, right? I've had projects where I actually only produce the tables and figures in Markdown and all then export them to one file, right? The text editing I still do in Microsoft Word because sometimes it is easier to work with other co-authors and collaborators in Microsoft Word because you can do track changes, leave comments, compare versions, and all of that. Um, if you work with people who don't usually work with R, you know, it gets quite tricky to work on the same text together within R Markdown. So sometimes I just use R Markdown to provide a reproducible version of all the analysis, tables, figures, and so forth. So if something changes in the analysis, um, I just change uh, wherever I need to change the code, I run it again and that same file in one sweep gets outputted again and I can use those outputs then and include them in my, in my manuscript or in my report. Another way of approaching this is actually to do everything in R Markdown, right? To also do all the writing there, um, which can offer certain advantages. For example, you can do what's called um, inline, inline text or inline code. So within your text, in your written narrative, you can cite certain numbers or refer to certain uh, things you did in the analysis, right? And they get automatically updated. So if you write, this analysis is based on a thousand students, you don't have to write a thousand students. You can just um, input a shortcut. So R automatically puts in whatever number of students you're working with at that moment, right? So if your analysis kick out 500 students, let's say all students uh, at the political science faculty, you know, then that number is automatically updated and you don't have to update it sort of manually in the text. So this is one, one advantage of um, doing everything in Markdown. So if you do that, I'm just going to show you how to add some text now and, and, and format it, right? I've already prepared this to save some time. Um, so let's go ahead and go through that. The uh, smaller br larger sign just adds a space in the um, in the report. The three uh, stars here add a horizontal line. The pound sign space and uh, a, a word will add a title. Okay, I've actually already knitted this just to show you what it will look like, and it would look like this. Right here's the title. Here's some, here's some spaces and then I have that thin horizontal line and here a large title called background. Okay, let's go back to R. Now there is a subtitle and you see that the titles are nested. So the largest title, first level title is just one pound. The next level title is two pound signs. The third one, three pound signs and so forth. So don't forget the space after the pound sign. So any written text is just normal writing as you were writing it in, in Microsoft Word, for example, right? That you could write anything here. This is new text, okay? Um, so this is very simple. Again, two more spaces. Then we have another sub um, subheading here. Now, some more for formatting tricks. If you use a star sign or two star signs around a... Um, a word, it will turn it into cursive, right? You see here that our markdown is cursive. If you um, want to present something as a hyperlink, you just surround it by these smaller than and larger than signs around the actual URL. Or if you want to do a hyperlink based on a word, right? If you put a link behind a written word and hyperlink that, you can enter it um, within square brackets and then add the um, add the URL here in, in normal brackets behind it, okay? If you use two stars, the word um, will be displayed as bold. Let's quickly check it out. 
here's the bold word, here's the hyperlink, here's the other link, okay? Let's quickly review also lists. You can use different um, options here to include um, lists of bullet points um, at different levels, right? You have the star sign, just one star, a plus sign and a minus sign. And this will then end up looking like this. So different options here to include lists. You can also include quotes. And I've done this here, just came up with some fake quote. Um, and you do this by, if, if every row at first you include a larger than sign, then you include your quote here in quotation marks, and then you add this particular function here. So in single quotation marks, r tuft double colon quote underscore footer, and then uh, this is what is what is being referenced as the source. And let's check out what that looks like. You see it here. This is the quote, right? And it's just automatically formatted like this. It adds this bar here. Okay. Now, what about, what if you want to add a footnote? So you can do this using this awkward sign here, like a, a roof or a hat sign. Uh, and then immediately following after it, uh, square brackets right and this automatically puts in a footnote also here's an important footnote one and if you scroll all the way down here right it lists your footnote okay let's see what else we got so here i included some what's called inline code so i'm writing here about the sample that we're using in the text right and i just want to say how many extra students that are included in the data set. That is common if you present some figures and some tables, like actually in the text you're describing your sample and you're saying, well, this analysis is based on this and that. So I'm doing that not by actually writing the number, but by just referring to um, inline code. And this is a single quotation mark and then just an R a space n row function and then the student's data set, right? Remember that we have loaded everything using this first code chunk here. So in this R Markdown session, we have all the data frames we need. We have all the figures and tables. Everything is, is loaded in the environment there once we run this. And because R knows that the student's data frame is there, right? we just call on the nrow function, which gives us the number of rows in that data frame. And then this number is automatically displayed in, um, in the text, right, in the report. Let's quickly check that out. Okay, here you see there are a thousand individuals in this data set, right? So, so this is how the inline code works. And this is gonna be very useful if you do all your writing in, in R Markdown. Okay. One more formatting option here is actually to include tabs using the tab set um, options. Um, I added this here um, in the chapter results after the header and the header is results and then square and then woven brackets dot tab set. And what that does is that it actually displays subsections, not underneath each other, but actually as different tabs, just a formatting option, right? And it applies to everything, to all the subsections that are following um, wherever you put this tab set sign. I'm going to show you what that looks like. Here we have the results section, right? And it's actually going to um, put all the results in, in the, that are following the results section into these different tabs. We have a table and we have result. Now, this is very useful if you actually do um, produce an HTML report and it offers some interactivity, right? You can have users go through a lot of graphs a little bit more easily and, and it's, it's quite user friendly and a little bit more fun, right? Imagine you have 10 tables here and it's, it's, it's better to go through it like this, it looks a little nicer. However, of course, if you're using our markdown to export to a, a Microsoft Word file, which I'm going to show you later, or a PDF file, then this type of interactivity is not, is not possible. But it works for HTML reports that, are, that anyone can open in, a, in any browser. All right, one more thing I wanna show you is actually how to include pictures in your report, right? Um, 
One thing I want to show you is how to include pictures in your report. In this case, I'm going to just include a logo of my university. You got to save whatever image file you want to feature in the report in your folder, and then you add a reference to that particular path. So I'm just copy pasting that in here. You see you have an exclamation mark, closed brackets, and then um, the path to the image file, and then the name of the image file, and, and close it. And let's see, let's run it and see what that looks like. Okay, here we go. We now have the university logo included. All the formatting is there in our results and tables are there. Okay, this is, this is it. Some basic tricks on how to add text and format text. As always, all of this is included in the online course. There's a whole section on fine tuning your R markdown file and formatting text and, 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 and so forth.